Welcome to another edition of Practical Welding Television. I'm your host, Amanda Carlson. Today we're sticking to the basics with SMAW, also known as stick or arc welding. Stick welding is known for its flexible nature and its ability to weld a number of different metals. We're here today with Mike Merriman and Larry Clevenger of Rock Valley College, and they're gonna walk us through the basics of stick welding. So let's get started. So we're in the shop here with Mike, and like I said before, we're going to be talking about SMAW. Mike, what does the SMAW stand for? SMAW stands for Shielded Metal Arc Welding. Okay, and where, where is this process commonly used? Process is used uh, quite often in uh, construction industries, uh, machine repair, such as farming and pipeline welding. Okay, could you maybe go through some of the advantages and then disadvantages of this process? major advantage of SMAW is that, is that it's very versatile. Uh, it's very portable. The portability of it uh, means a lot. You can go to remote places uh, and perform welding uh, process without having to carry special equipment such as uh, gas tanks, you know, something like that. Uh, doesn't require any. So portability, I think, is probably the biggest advantage. Disadvantage, it takes a little while to learn, to learn the process. We've got four different electrodes here. What's the process for selecting the electrode for your particular job? Well, first thing you want to do is uh, identify the type of material that you want to weld. There are many different types of material. We have welding rods for uh, steel. There's welding rods for stainless steel. There's uh, welding rods for aluminum, which isn't used too much nowadays. There are other processes that uh, weld aluminum a lot better, but you got to match that to the type of material first. And then also, the next thing is the um, type of position that you're going to weld and also the thickness of material that you're going to weld. The thickness has, uh, is a factor in selecting the size of rod. Is there a particular electrode that's easier to use or more difficult to use? Yes, sir. When we have, uh, have a beginning student uh, starting out learning to weld, we select some of the rods that are a little bit easier to strike an arc, a little bit user friendly. Uh, Larry refers to them as sissy rods, but uh, it, it does uh, build their uh, skill a little bit faster and builds their confidence a little bit faster. We're here with Larry and Larry's just about to tell us how to initiate an arc. Well, there's a couple ways to, to initiate a start on it. And one is a bump start, which you would uh, go down, hit the metal, and come up just uh, about an eighth of an inch, let the arc get going, and then just start your travel speed. The other one is a scratch start, which is like striking a match. You would strike it, and then you would pick it up about a sixteenth or eighth of an inch, and then you would then travel on with your beat then that way. What's your favorite way? I like to bump start because I find it to be easier. I can drop it down or bump it down and then come right up and then I can take off on my bead and it makes it just that much easier for me to do. One of the reasons they call it stick welding is obviously the electrode looks like a stick, but also sometimes the electrode has a tendency to stick to the workpiece. So do you have any advice on how to prevent that from happening? Well, sometimes when a, when a stick, will, stick rod will stick to, to your work, you're low on your amperage and sometimes it's just the way that you handle the rod. So then you would have to just make sure that you always have uh, the air gap or the arc length in there at a proper length so that you can travel without, without it ground, grinding or grounding out to the, the workpiece. Okay, and speaking of arc length, once you finally get started, what's, what's the proper arc length and then what's the proper travel speed? Well, the arc length is the distance between the end of this rod and the workpiece. And it comes down about a sixteenth of an inch or so. And then your travel speed is about laying the bead down that's a width about two times of the welding rod as, as you're moving. And you can determine that by looking at the weld as you travel. All right, we've talked about it. Now Larry's gonna demonstrate it, starting with the bump start. Right, Larry? Right. I'm going to do the bump start with what I call the sissy rod. This is a real easy rod to get started, and you can really make it. Everybody think you're a great welder. Okay, now this is the bump start with uh, 60 or 70 14. 
As I travel forward, I'm trying to make it to be twice the distance of that rod. You can tell by this, it's a very easy rod to get started. This is 6013, which is another easy rod to get started. And I just travel slowly to make sure that I get the width that I want for my and my travel speed. Now this is 7018. This is used throughout the industry and is the best stick rod that we've got. Yeah. They weld quite similar to each other. Your travel speed is the same. The width of the of the bead. The arc length is the same. Now I have one more, 6010. This is a deep cutting rod that uh, can dig through paint, rust, and everything else. You'll see a little bit more spatter out of this one. And it sticks too. Okay, now we're going to clean the slag off the 7014 first. Chip it, comes right off, comes off in a solid piece. 13 should do about the same. 7018 is going to be a little bit harder to make it come off. And there's hardly no slag on the 10. In closing, Mike, if, what do you tend to say to your students when they're first getting started with this? Any, any tips or tricks? First thing we want to do is to uh, select the proper welding rod. The proper number and the size for the job that you're going to be doing and the type of material that you're going to be welding. So we get our uh, electrodes selected, then we have to make sure that our machine is properly set for the type of electrode and welding that we're going to do. It has proper uh, polarity on the machine and the proper amperage for the size and type of rod that we're going to be using. Then we uh, want the students to use the proper angles, there's a couple of them, work angle and travel angle, and we got to make sure that those are proper, and we, uh, once we have the, those angles set, then we uh, want the student to get comfortable and do basically a, a dry run, would establish the proper arc length and, and travel speed. So I like them to do a dry run first before they ever even strike the arc. Attaching the welding rod to the stinger, there's several ways to do it. You can attach it like this. You can have the welding rod coming straight out from the end. A lot of people will do that when they weld overhead. It can be on an angle like that. It can be on an angle like this. I don't like any of them myself. I uh, stress to the students uh, a method that I had one of my old uh, welding instructors years ago taught me how to do. That's put it on an angle and then I uh, bend it and then I can rotate it. And that helps, gives me uh, a little bit more flexibility in establishing my proper angles. And majority of the students that try this really like that once they uh, get used to using it. But it's pretty much user preference, whatever, oh, yes. whatever makes yes. you comfortable. Get yourself comfortable. That hat, uh, no matter what process you're doing, you're welding, getting comfortable, means so much to uh, making the proper well. Thank you guys so much for everything and thank you for joining us. If you have any questions or ideas for future episodes, uh, please feel free to email me. Um, if you're one of the first 20 people to write in, we'll send you your own uh, limited edition practical welding television hat. So we want to hear from you. Uh, from all of us here, thanks for joining us and we'll see you next time.